Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, uh, Dave has just set out there that you know they really wanted you. How much of how much of a bearing did that have on your decision to take this job? Um, I've got, I've got to be honest, um, it, timing in football is not over. You don't always get that luxury. Um, last three, four months, um, it's sort of come clear to me that I was looking to... I was I was happy, but I, I, I needed more. Um, it became clear to me I needed to look for the number one spot for me um, as a person for my progression. Um, and obviously didn't know what that was going to be at that time. Um, I spoke, I was working with Vincent during that period. Um, obviously, Bayern Munich came up, but it was still my option to be a number one. Um, and then I just sort of really made it clear to myself, this is what it was going to be, this is how I'm going to go about it. And then obviously the situation changed here with Wales. Um, I was still looking at club, but um, I have to be honest, it, 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 it can drag you. Like Wales has always been really important to me. Um, I've spent a lot of my career away from here as well and obviously I've had certain periods where I've been here but um, I was born here um, I've spent a lot of my career away from here and the opportunity then to to lead your national team is rare it's rare and to get it is a first opportunity um, by you know with obviously Mark Hughes then coming to mind Gary Speed coming to mind um, and it just really it, it became clear to me that um, if there was an opportunity of being able to do this, this is the one I wanted. And um, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. Sounds like you have not turn this job down. No, I, you can, <laughs> you can turn, yeah. Um, but no, it, to be, um, I don't know, it was just, it, it was strange like when I spoke to the process and I spoke to Dave as well, the more I got into it, the more excited I got. Um, and I, it wasn't, I honestly, from afar, this was not something that was always playing on my mind. It really wasn't. Um, but when I, the more I got into the detail of it, um, the more reasons, because you try and make a sensible decision, not just total emotion. Um, everything just come back to um, certain feelings I had um, about being involved with Wales. Um, then really, if I look at it, it never really left me. It's always been there and... Um, and it came back even stronger and stronger now. So I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to be doing this. From listening to the interview that you did yesterday, it was on the, the Football Association website. It was interesting that obviously you've been watching Wales as a fan, haven't you, the last couple of years, yeah. seeing them in stadiums. And you spoke a lot about the fans and what it means to, to be part of this Wales journey, if you like. How, how exciting is it now that you're going to be leading that? Yeah, very exciting. Um, I've to be a, a fan during this period has been great. Um, it's been such a um, a, a huge um, ex and exciting, and also I don't know whether it's Welsh. You feel real strong and real part of this. So a lot of the games, a lot of like being able to qualify, being able to see another European Championships, going to a World Cup. Um, those moments have been um, have been big, but also to me. I feel this, this path's been set for a number of years now and it was leading this way um, and it's, it's what we expect now and I know people are always looked to, to come back and say, well, you know, you weren't qualifying for so many years and, but if you look at the set, setup and you look at the organisation and where it is now, it's geared for success and it's geared to qualify um, and it's just for ourselves, including myself, is to enhance that and improve it um, and, to, and to keep improving where we are now at this present moment. Of course, yeah, we've had a knockback because we didn't enter, we weren't involved in this European Championships, but um, to make sure that hopefully we're able to go to a World Cup again um, and hopefully with the Euros then after that. So that's a real motivation as well. Um, fan reaction uh, to, to you getting the job. I mean, lo lots of people have been this job before. Haven't you? Yes, yes. Uh, didn't get the job then. Do you think there's, there's an unfair... Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you it now. It's BBC, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, do, do you think perhaps there's a, a perception that you were maybe being judged on maybe the perception of you from 20 yeah. years ago? No, I, no I, I wouldn't say that. Um, but I understand the perception as well. I, I completely... 
Um, completely understand it. And probably that's why um, I've, my thought process was about becoming number one then, because inexperience, that's always going to be thrown. Um, but also temperament, that's a nice word that usually likes to get used. Um, until, I, until I'm able to do it, um, and hopefully then after a few months, after a year, maybe two, maybe three, I don't know, I think you have a good understanding and yeah, temperament's fine. Yeah, now he has experience. Um, so hopefully that will be able to um, dismiss that. Um, but also, also it's important for me as well to be able to dismiss that. A final one from me. Um, I was talking to Ewan Roberts, a man you know well, who said he's, mm. he's never met anyone who wants to win. As <laughs> you. It doesn't, no, matter, it, it doesn't matter whether it's football or anything else. I mean, it's, look, it's not winning. I hate losing more. And there's a big difference. Um, I, I believe um, if you give everything you've got, and this is just not this is not just football. This in life, the mistakes will happen. I have no issue with that. It's learning, but also just trying to be the best you can be. Then I believe that's winning. Now, if I don't prepare and I don't put the effort in, and you lose, that's really something I really struggle to like to cope with. Um, and I don't like that for myself as a person. Um, so I know everyone to say about winning for me it's sometimes you'll win in different ways like if we play incredibly well okay we might not have got a result I might not have won at that moment I'm good I'm really fine because I see winning as a, as a longevity we'll get there in the end it's not a problem but um, losing and not being able to play well and not being able to carry out and give your all during that period uh, because I believe the habits that sometimes um, then I, I find that difficult um, but also, you know, I, I've just had two seasons. The first season of winning nearly every week, um, dominating a league um, to a manner that comes quite rare in a very difficult league. Also then going to the top league, being in the Premier League, losing most weeks. So I've seen really the level of how much you learn. And basically you learn more when you're losing. You learn more. Actually, I'm clearer now than what I was the season before. So um, you have to take the like rough or the smooth. There's no emotional roller coasters. You have to stay calm through it all, and um, and that's um, that's something as maybe coaching side, uh, I've been able to really pick up and been able to cherish and uh, be grateful for. Good luck in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jack Carl. Geraint here. He was from Sky Sports News. Hi, uh, Craig. Congratulations. Uh, nice to meet you. Thank you. Um, Craig, firstly, just to. Elaborate, I suppose, on, on some of the previous answers you've given there. My question to you is, why Wales, why now? And also, why not club management? Because of the way your career was going, your name was being talked about as a progressive, forward-looking coach. So, why step away from the, the club scene and, and the, a national role? I understand yeah, about Wales no, and sorry. that one, but... No, I, un I understand. Um, I never felt the need to be a manager. It, there wasn't a burning desire for me. Um, I was really happy. Maybe I spent a lot of a lot of my career in the limelight. Um, and anyone knows me, I'm, I'm I don't need the limelight to understand what I mean. I'm quite comfortable without it. Um, and I wasn't sure if I ever wanted to put myself through that moment again. Um, so I was happy in the background. I was happy learning. I love football, so it's great for me to still be involved in football. But then, really, it comes to a stage where I believe I've got to where I needed to coaching. Um, and then listen, if I have to do interview, uh, interviews, sorry, and, and be here and put up with you guys, if that's the worst case and it's stopping me from doing it, I'm gonna have to do it. it uh, look, this is what it is, I'm gonna have to do it. So um, I didn't see you guys putting me off enough to be able to stop me from wanting to, wanting to be a manager. Cause I believe that's, for me, it's, I have to be true to me. I have to be true to my beliefs as well. And it was the next step. Um, club, it's, it of course is a little bit different, but even speaking with Dave, um, that was how can I, how can I turn this into day to day? You know how can this be every day? Because it has to be for me. I cannot uh, be not working. Um, so we've worked out a, a plan, a plan of action to make sure that I'm either constantly in analysis, constantly reviewing games, um, constantly looking at different training ideas. Um, so that then, if I was able to manage my time and use it right. Um, and treat it as much as I can like a club, then it's um, just for my own mental, mental well-being. It was, it was, that was important for me. And we were able to 
um, I was able to be satisfied that we can we can keep along that track and I'm able to do that. I hope you're not that bad, Craig. No, <laughs> we, we shall see. Um, you're coming into a role where the entire DNA of being the Wales men's senior manager is utterly different to the one it was 15 years yeah. ago. The journey that Gary Speed's been on. The fact that Wales have been Euros, almost serial yeah. qualifiers. It's not just what happens in Wales. Wales are now on the boat of the map. There's much more interest in Wales and the FAW, what they do. So what is the expectation? What is the target that you, the bare minimum you have to achieve to even stay here? Such is what is expected of Wales these days. I, look, I try not to, uh, I, I understand, I definitely understand the question, but I can address it back to how I, I, how I am as a person. It's, um, I want to dominate in every aspect. And now, like I said, winning football matches, this is me personally, this is not, this is how I, how I feel. It's, I have, to, I have to have control of everything during the game. Um, that's how I feel comfortable. And I believe that if you're able to do that, then football matches, winning games, qualifying for tournaments come with it. But in order to be able to do that, the detail you have to go into uh, becomes hard work. And that starts, like, it, it's starting now. So the camp's already going to be in September. The work, the detail that's going into first game Turkey, I've already watched them eight times already. I'm not saying that's going to be enough, but I'm already on to the detail. And the players then are able to see that. They're able to see the, the level of what you go into and it allows them to be able to perform to the best they can. And I believe with the whole department as well, working that way, if we're all able to work with each other and and work at a level, to the highest level we can. I'm not saying to reach for everyone else and what they do, and it's not a concern that we can be the best that we can in every department um, and help each other to be able to improve, because that's what it is. It's, it's not the players. The players, you'll see us, uh, but it's everyone in a department that makes Wales or makes a club or whatever environment you're in makes that successful. If you're not all working together, it will not work. Something will break down sooner or later. But if we're all together, which I've seen and I'm very confident with, and we're able to progress, even like this, was this good enough for you guys? Do you need more? Do you need more drinks or do you need more support? That it's, that it's those type of stuff that really matter because they're the details. And if we're able to then transfer that into the playing side, um, that what gives you an opportunity of being successful. And then with the players we already have as well, then you've got a good chance of being able to qualify and not just qualify, then maybe you might be able to surprise one or two like in 2016 and get to the later stages. Hopefully, hopefully. But we have to be professional, but understand that the fact of what we are, we work hard. We work hard and every detail we try and get to the top is what we can. Just moving on, something you actually touched on, you mentioned temperament. We've talked as, as, as well about how this this role comes with a certain scrutiny is different from club football. The Welsh FA have, have been progressive, they have ethics, morals, uh, bringing whole parts of the community together, safeguarding, etc. Just want to ask you as well how much you've changed as a person. Have you playing days through your, 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 your coaching career, what you've learned, who's influenced you maturing as well? I know that was an investigation back, what, six years ago. You, yeah, but you learned from it. You came out and you gave a statement. Yeah. And just how much you're aware that, that is now a part of being part of this organisation, being a national manager, the scrutiny you, you're going to come under. I, I put myself really into more scrutiny than anyone. I, I'm so determined to be the best human being I can um, that it's 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 a driving force for me, not just work-wise, but as a human being. Um, it's so important for me to to be the best I can be. Now, of course, I'm still not the finished article and, and I never will be, I'm not perfect. Um, I'm still yet to come across anyone who is, but anything I've ever done, I've owned. I've never shied away from it. Um, any mistake I've made, I've owned again. And I'll admit it and I'll be honest and I'll be open because I want to be the best person I can be. Um, and I'm, I'm still striving for that as well. And it's a real burning desire for me. And, you know, we're only a short time on earth and I don't want to sound doom and gloom, but I want to try and be, I want to enjoy it as much as I can, but I want to be the best person I can be. 
So whenever that day is, then I know that I've given it all. I've given everything to be to be the best. Can I impact people's lives in a positive way? Um, and just because it makes me feel better. But you know, I'm so self-aware um, that I'm really always striving to improve me because I believe it improves me. Then um, it's always going to help me maybe make a tiny little bit of difference to other people. Um. Just again, you, you, your passion is coming through. I think we, we all expected that today. In terms of, as you mentioned there, football is enjoyment, it's escape business, it's entertainment for those who, who are watching, not for necessarily for you, yeah. for your... No, it is, it is for me as well. Don't yeah, we? exactly. So, style of play, how you want <laughs> players to express themselves. Yeah. Do you have a, even now, I know you're, new, you're so new to the job, but do you have a sort of a DNA or a plan of how yeah. you want Welsh players to I, look, I, I have like key principles. What I stand for as a person, um, and I, like I, obviously I've spoke about it as well. Is it's hard work. You know, it's the discipline to your craft. It's a privilege to play this game. It really is. Um, and players are, are definitely aware of that privilege, and they definitely embrace that as well. But for me, it's really hard work, and that comes from um, actually be willing to learn and be open. Be open-minded to everything because the information you plan to give players um, on opposition but also on themselves and how we see this role, how we see you being able to do this, you need to be open-minded to that. Um, for me, it's respect as well. So, you know, you respect the environment, you respect the people who work hard for you as well. Um, and everyone has to have that level of respect for each other to be able to go in one direction. Um, you know, respect for the shirt as well. Can you leave that shirt in a better place than when you found it? So when you're handing it over, that someone else is able to improve that as well. So you keep that mentality going. Um, so that's, 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 that's the, the huge parts for me. Like I said, like even like how you leave the room, how you like, if you've gone to an away game, we clean up after ourselves. There's no one's job to be able to clean up for us. No, we leave it how we found it because that's the respect we have for everyone else as well, but also the respect we have for ourselves and our, and our fellow players and also our staff. But everyone who's involved with Wales from supporting to you guys, that there's a level of respect as well. There has to be. Um, and then, like, for me then, it's, that's like, they're, they're key issues for me. They're key issues for me. And playing-wise, I believe with those, that type of, that type of attitude, that type of open-minded, uh, open-mindedness that we're able like I am I do like front foot football and I don't know if you understand that but it's um, I like pressing I like us without the ball I like us working hard without the ball um, the team comes first so we're very difficult to break through um, we have high intensity um, also being able to build from the back there's only one reason I think a lot of people get confused with building from the back the only reason it's not an ego trip it's not to try and look smart in the opposition it's to score it's all scored. If I can get that in one, I can get that in one. Perfect. But the players are knowing they're setting traps. So we're always setting traps. You might think you can play, but we're, we're allowing you one pass to play. But as soon as you play that, then it's the trap we're going. But we commit. Everyone commits to it. Um, and it's the same when you're able to play as well, when you're going through the lines, when you're able to play forward. Everything is the score, whether it's a throw-in against, throw-in for, it's the score. Everything we do is to look to score goals. Um, so they're key, they're key elements um, to my game I know you guys might want to say formations and listen um, I think you need to move away from formations I think you need to start looking at football a little bit differently we don't play formations play shapes but the idea is can I create an extra player in a part of the field where you don't have it so it's 2v1s and looking to create those areas in every part of the football pitch um, and then we're able to hopefully make it well speed up the attack when we get into the final third so where it counts and we're able to score more goals and, and that gives us a better chance of winning. Thanks so much. Lovely to talk to you. No problem, thank you. Lawrence from Talkspot. Hi, Craig. Yeah, congratulations on the job. Thank you. Um, but post Gareth Bale, it's a new era. Are the players there to play the type of football that, that you want? Yeah. Yeah, in a short quick, but yes. Yes, there's definitely, um, we've got high quality players. Um, with definitely the right profile um, of what I would look to, what I'd be looking to um, get across, get across to. I'm sorry, um, we definitely have the profile of players, yeah.
And are you looking at sort of bringing in younger players as well? Is that is that one of your remits? Always. If listen, if they're good enough, been involved. Uh, we just seen yesterday with Spain. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're good enough, you're playing, um, and that's always um, important for any team. But um, listen, is not it's for me. It's high intensity sprint, you know, sprint distance. Um, so a lot of the attributes I feel I, I need to be able to get this to get the team playing the way I would like it to play. Um, listen, you could be any age, but if you're able to able to carry out what we need, you know, you're, you're going to be playing. And listen, I'm watching you with 10,000 fans rattling around in the Millennium Stadium. How yeah. much are you looking forward to? Have you, have you looked on a little envious in that? Oh, of course, really <laughs> envious, yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, but also um, really happy as well. Um, I touched on it a little bit yesterday with the interview. It was, um, you know, we've had some big games, especially qualifying games as well. Um, and the qualifying rounds, but also the later stages to be able to qualify. It was, it was very unfortunate against Poland, obviously, with penalties. But during those games as well, um, you always get a sense of where the crowd are at. And I'll, every game, you always get a certain period in the game where you might not be playing or you might not be dominating the game because a 90 minute game can change as well at times. But during that period where your back's against the walls, that's when you've seen, that's when you know you've got a crowd because they see it as well. And now we can all go quiet and suddenly start getting edgy or maybe get on one or two players' backs because you'll sense the atmosphere change. And as an opposition player, you wait for those moments because that's when you can speed up then. That's when you can start challenging. Um, I've always felt, especially over the last four or five years, they've never allowed that to happen. As soon as the game got a little bit on edge, they, then they got louder. Then they seen those moments. Um, and I remember even I felt it and obviously I don't want to talk too much about club as well but even when I was at Liverpool and we were like in Champions Leagues and big moments um, you've seen the game change but they seen it and they were able to get you through um, and that's where I believe we've been able to qualify for those tournaments and that's where like a club like Liverpool were able to get to numerous Champions League finals and be so successful over a period because the support at that moment they read you know, you read the room, do you understand what I mean? You understand they need you. And um, yeah, to watch that has been really like, it's, they played a huge part in that. And, and, I, and I hope they know that as well, because they definitely have. So what are you thinking about September then and walking out for that first time? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, I, I try not to, honestly, it, it's more turkey. So, um, and I'm just looking forward to the week as well. Um, obviously we're going to like there's going to be a lot of planning from now to then like to every detail how I won the first moment they're in um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of detail that needs to go into um, but I'm looking forward to the game I'm looking forward to playing you know a good opposition like Turkey as well and just one for me the backroom staff have you have you got people lined up do we, do we know who's coming in with you uh, not yet um, there's conversations Dave will have um, and with respect to, to people as well who are in roles as well, it wouldn't be fair to, to comment on anyone. That'll be, we'll leave that to Dave. That's Dave's role. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay. Uh, if not, we'll go to the written press huddle. So if we just set up on the side here and then.